Hey guys, it's going to see again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I'm really excited to show you what I have so far for my new app that is going to be releasing for iOS. So far I have just a few things that I've been adding since the last video. In the last video I showed you this demo right here. And I can now place basically visual effects and select visual effects and place them in augmented reality and they, they look really cool but there's not a lot of UI work on this this is just you know fairly simple and I wanted to add more depth basically improve the UI and start you know making it a real app so that's what I'm gonna be working on and showing you today because I've been doing a lot of changes and I apologize about my voice I am a little bit sick and that's why my voice sounds my sound a little bit strange but so what I have right now is I've been working on, you know, a new UI. This is, you know, fairly simple. I still have a lot to do. And, and the way that it's going to work is I just been, you know, prototyping something minimalistic. I have the little side button here where you press it. It'll bring in this panel. The, the idea for this app is that you can not only select effects, but you can also, you know, apply motion to the effects. You can also snap the effects to maybe an image by using image tracking or we can also snap effects to a body if we're using body tracking so i'm going to be incorporating a lot of this functionality into this app and then motion would be for things like if you want to add you know maybe a rotation motion when you want to add a rot uh, maybe a translation motion you want the object to go from one point to another so i'm going to have some presets in there also the effects are going to be just different particle systems that i'm going to be that i'm going to be creating so the way that I normally create user interface is I do them in Photoshop and, and I always start with, with two things. I always, when I go to Photoshop, I always try to make it look like the, the, the final app. And, and the reason why I do that is because I want to see how this is going to look by having an overlay. So you can see that I have everything here is organized. So I have like, you know, the panel, which is the entire thing. And then I can now toggle. So this is going to be the button menu. This one is going to be for the effects button and this one is going to be for motions, for settings, also for canceling. Also, these two buttons right here, I have them set up where if you go under the effects panel, which I call this one the effects panel, it's actually going to change because this is more than the effects panel. It's going to be the motion panel, which is this icon, the settings panel. So, but for now, I have them in there and then you can see how I can hide, hide those. And the cool thing about this is I can also do, okay, now that I'm testing, so now that I'm that I'm doing things like this, I can go ahead and say, so what I'm going to do just by, I'm going to move this button. This actually should be outside. And this is this should be the, the whole panel. And actually, I think I moved the wrong one. Let me go ahead and undo. Undo here. And then the one that I want to move out, it's going to be, the button menu which actually is going to move the reason why i want to do this is so that i can apply so let's say that i'm i'm doing i'm moving this down i want to see how it looks when i'm moving it down if i wanted to animate it you know or if i wanted to look like this on start and then as soon as i press i bring it up and that might be something that i that i'm that i'm going to be doing so doing things like this in in photoshop allow me to see exactly how i want it the how i want this to look on the on the real on the final product so let's say that i have those buttons right right there the other thing that i normally do is have reference images and this is what you can see here these are just reference images from me playing with the with some of the some of the augmented reality effects the visual effects and like i said i do that so that i know how this is going to look so that's what some of these ones are like if you want to look at each of these ones are are different icons so if i look at for instance if i want to look at the setup of these and this button right here is basically just a rectangle and the cool thing with this is i can go into properties that say that i don't like i don't like how this looks like for some reason or i wanted to make it more circular i can go here and actually just select it i can go here and then just change it whether i want it to be a square or i want it to be you know in that way i can see exactly how i want it maybe i want it to be circles and i can apply it to all of those so i can make changes in real time the, the other cool thing about this is, so I have two things that are set up differently. So let me, let me show you, I have two different uh, PSDs. I'm gonna show you in the file system what, why I do that. So it's gonna go into Unity Projects and this one is Visuali Visuali5. And then if I go into my Finder, 
I'm going to show you how I set up the files. You can see that I have uh, actually a UI reference folder. And this one has a master. The master is the one that I'm just using for, for me to be able to see how the UI is going to look like. And let me actually move. Let me go ahead and snap this back and then move this down. There we go. So that way I can see, okay, the master is going to be the one that is going to resemble what the device is going to look like. But the master sheet, it's going to be the one that is a slide. So what I normally do is, let's say that I, I create a new button. Let's say that I create a new button, right? And I already have this button, but let's just pretend that I have this button and I'm going to be moving it. So what I normally do is I, I take this panel out, just like undock it, and then I just drag one of these buttons, and then I drag it into the into here, and then I just align it. And then what I do, I bring it into Photoshop and I slice it. So that's normally the process. The master sheet is my sheet of sprites, and this is going to be for re referencing purposes. So now that I have that, I, I want to show you something else. Let me just close out of this. Close out of this as well. And I show you in the previous video how I was creating thumbnails of all the different effects. But to be honest, that, that's not as cool because it's just a static image. So I was thinking of doing something different. And instead of just doing a thumbnail, I'm gonna I, I'm doing a video. So the video is going to be rendering to from a video player to an actual raw image. And the way that I set it up, it's this way. So if I go into texture videos, right now I just have two. And if I go ahead and open this in the Finder and just play, it's just you know a simple video that I have with the you know with with the effect that I'm going to allow people to select. I also have one for the other one. And that way, people can get a basically a preview of the ve of the effect that they're going to be using in AR. So the the other thing that I did is I didn't want that to look like that because my UI is white, so I wanted to have kind of a transparency on it, an alpha on it. So if I go ahead and play this, I can show you the results of of the first portal. So and just ignore the errors. I still have a few things that I need to make make work. And let's see. OK, there we go. For some reason, I think I still have a bug. But you can see how that shows in white. And that's because I have a particle shader associated with this that actually fades and removes all the black that is surrounding the image and also the color. So I like how this looks. So that's one of the things that I, that I also change if I go into the material. And if I wanted to change this material and make it look, you know, maybe I wanted to make it look a little bit different or if I wanted, you know, to have a little bit of color, I could do that. That's kind of how, that's kind of the look that I that I like. I like it white. And if I go ahead and, and move these two effects around, so these effects are going to be the effects that are showing on the selection. If I move this up, this one now, the second one is going to become the first one, which is actually the portal pink. So if I hit play, you're going to be able to see that the new effect is now is now the portal pink. And I can open it. Looks like I do have an issue because this doesn't show all the time. I'll fix it by the next video. But let me just go ahead and play it and give it a second here. And I think I, yeah, I think I have an issue because the the other one is not loading for some reason. And I think I just need to I just need to revamp that and make it. So for now, I'm just gonna move it down, and then I'll take a look at that and see why that's the problem. Let me just go ahead and play it and see if the other one shows now. And it looks like it's not showing. I wonder if it's because of the... So let me go ahead and make a couple of changes because I know that there are a lot of things in here that are going to be changing based on the changes that I made on the UI. So if I go into the place on plane, I have a lot of different buttons in here that I'm, that I'm, that I'm selecting. So I'm just going to leave one. This one is going to be the effect, effect button. And then we're just going to be removing most of this for now. And I'll just remove this one as well. And then I think that I think that's fine. We'll just leave this one as a default. And I think that one is already available in the inspector. Let me check that. And all right. And right now I have the, let's see, the effects button is not associated with anything that that's okay which is going to be for now i'm just going to go ahead and associate it with the effects effects button here let me cancel that go into the the proper object and then infect button so it's going to be the one that i just have selected and it looks like i moved it out 
Okay, uh, let me go back. And I think my my sickness is messing with my with my head right now because I, I can't concentrate. But yeah, it looks like looks like that should be okay. Let me see if I can get rid of that error. And yeah, now I'm getting errors on the on the other things. Let me fix that one as well. So this one's gonna be the toggle effect panel, which I'm not using that anymore. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of it. Toggle effect panel, because I'm basically changing a lot of the implementation here, and I think that works. Let me just try that now. And okay, let me just clear the the log and then hit play and see if the see if we don't get any errors. It looks like we don't get any more errors, and it looks like I still get one error here because of the toggle, the toggle effect, and which is actually getting call from. That's fine. Let's just go ahead and get rid of all the toggling of the effects panel. I'm also gonna get rid rid of the toggle button, and because I, I'm basically redoing this whole thing based on the previous video. Okay, so let's go back. Just want to make sure we don't get any errors. If we don't get any errors in, in the texture still no plane, I'll have to I'll have to look at it. But let's go ahead and make sure that I clear the log. And hit play. Okay, now we're clean. I open it up and then yeah, the errors were messing with the texture that was loaded. And now you can see. Let me test the other one just to make sure. And just moving the portal effect above it. Let me see if that one works too. And for some reason that one is not loading. And let me go into effects. And I'm gonna just add a breakpoint here. Just to make sure that that it's getting that it's getting called. And then alright. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the game from playing. Hit play. And okay, I'm gonna bring it up. This is going to load all the effects. So if you look at the effects, if we look at the effect that's zero, this one is going to be this effect. And I want to make sure that, okay, effect, it's going to get locked. And then the next thing that happens is each one of these effects, if we look at this subject, this subject contains an effect name and also a stream video. So what's going to happen is on enable, I'm going to be calling the star video. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint here just to make sure that the right effect is getting loaded. And we can see, let me just go ahead and do it again. Okay, so now I can see which one is this. This is portal animation one and a stream video, it's right. And it's going to go ahead and start the video. And let me make sure that this is set to point. Yep, that's correct. And I think this should play. So for some reason that video is not playing. Let me see why that is. And okay. So what I'm going to do instead of just doing what I just did, I'm just going to hit play here. And I'm going to be changing. Now let me go back into here. And the stream video, what I'm going to do just for this test, I'm going to move this under the awake method. I just want to make sure that it is playing. And if, it's, if it does play, that means that there's something going on with my logic. And this is supposed to show and start playing the video. Okay, and what I'm gonna do too, if we go into, let's see, into effects, I'm gonna disable the UI effects. And I think that's everything that I need to do. UI menu, make sure the UI menu. Okay, so that should be okay. UI effects, okay, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and try it. All right, guys, so it looks like I found the issue with the playback of the video. So I had a wait time of 0.1 in, you know, before the video actually gets prepared. There is a method in the video player that actually tells the, basically it tells us that the engine is ready to play back a video. So I needed to make sure that the, the playback number, the wait time was, you know, longer than the 0.1. So I made it 0.3. And now if we go in and hit play, you can see that that's now working. So just give it a second here, and now I can hit play. You can see that that shows. And then if I go ahead and move this effect up, and then try the other video, 
we're gonna see that that one also plays. You can see that. So that's kind of the look that I that I was looking for on the on the UI. So that's one of the pieces. So just to kind of give you an overview of what I have right now, that I I still have you know I still have a lot of a lot of things to do. I have all different effects right now that I've been showing you. I show you those on the on the previous video. Basically the fire, the meteor, and then so on. So if I drag one of these up and then put them right in the hierarchy, you can see you know some of those are all working. And and what I'm gonna do is just you know for the for the snapshot, I'm gonna be taking videos of all of them. And then as as I get closer to you know getting these structure well, well we're gonna be able just to drop in all the necessary pieces and load load them in load them in runtime so that's basically everything that i have right now i i did a lot of stuff a lot of things in the ui manager a lot of changes in there also the ui menu this one is going to be controlling the menu button the menu panel a lot of the things here you know whether i have something selected so if i hit play and i bring the i bring the menu let's say that i'm selecting this and it basically dismisses this I, I used to have to bind everything manually myself and now what I'm doing is I'm using I'm using the the event system to drive some of the behavior. So for instance, like when I click on that button, how do, how how does that bring this panel? And the way that that works is I have uh, what's called an on-click event on a UI pane. So this one has a little fade. So if I go into the menu panel, it has a UI pane and it's just a custom implementation that I did and you have a fading time and also a fade out time. So if I want if I wanted to fade, you know, much longer, I could set it to the fading it's going to be very very slow and I can I can determine whether it's going to be hidden or not. And this is an implementation that I I've been using and another friend of mine, you know, incorporated into one of our games and and I've been using it quite a bit, so I give him a lot of credit for that. And if I hit play, you're going to see that and I bring it in, you can see that the fading time is much longer. So I can control some of these properties here. I can also give it an identity so that I can I can I can use a UI pane manager to determine, you know, to open up a panel, open up a pane that has that ID in it. So that's that piece. The the other piece that I wanted to show you is let's say that I wanted to dismiss so the cancel button. So the way that I'm doing the cancel button, I'm using the unclick event, and I'm just saying, okay, when somebody clicks or touches that button, I'm going to hide the pane. So that pane is going to be this pane, so that is all associated. And I'm also going to be bringing in the menu button back. So I'm just accessing the property in runtime and setting it to true. And, and that's how that one works. The the click event on the effects themselves are handled a little bit different. I'm using an event trigger. And this is the thing that I, I haven't done in the past. I normally do it through code. So I started using the event trigger, so I can add an event trigger to this and even trigger to this. The reason for that is because I have a raycast target here as well. And I'm using the the pointer click. So when somebody clicks on these if on an effect, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically just dismiss that menu. Long term what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be selecting the determining what effect I have selected. And based on the effect that I have selected I'm gonna set it in memory and then I'm gonna know which effect the user wants to use for the augmented reality particles. So that's how that works, and then I still have a lot to do. There's, you know, that this is just an initial phase of the UI. If you guys have any questions about what what I just showed you, please let me know. And also, be sure to check out GameDev.net if you want to get tutorials on game development, and also find me in Patreon.com if you have additional questions. Thank you, guys.